the team completes the box cuts, they tackle one of the most dangerous aspects of the project, dropping the floor decks. If they were to leave the floors in place during the implosion, the floor's decks could trap falling beams and hold the structure up. The crew will cut out the floors from beneath their feet. They've left this for last because it restricts their movement. The floor decks also stabilize MST-40 in high winds. Once removed, the workers have a small window of time to safely load explosives. It's still all about the wind. We're watching the weather now. We've got hourly forecasts up through Thursday. So we keep watching the wind, and we're also watching the longer term uh, potential for tropical storms. You have to be aware of it. The site becomes more treacherous with each second. It does get a little eerie looking and a little eerie feeling. Uh, I've started a neighbor instead of MST. Now she's Miss Strong and Tough. So she's getting meaner, that's for sure. It's two days before implosion and time to implement Mark's plan for moving the guide wires on two of MST-40's lightning towers. One worker climbs the tower to move the cable on the mast. Another starts to loosen the cable anchor on the ground. They work together to release the tension, destabilizing the tower. We're gonna try to pull in the first temporary guy wire and maybe get it tensioned up. The towers are now vulnerable to wind and collapse. On the ground, David quickly moves the wires to their new locations. No one is certain that they will hold once tension is reapplied. David places the wires on their temporary anchors. Slowly, they impose over 2,700 kilograms of tension. Both wires hold. 